talk proper after verse 4, where is Malaysia heading? Perhaps you could tell me, do you think verse 4 was a success or was it not a success? Ask the chairperson. <laughs> <laughs> Verse <laughs> um, 4 is definitely a success uh, from our point of view, of course. Uh, firstly, is that um, it's unprecedented, like what uh, Ming has said. Mm. We overnight, uh, we initially, we only expected about 100, but 10,000 people actually slept on the streets mm. of Kuala Lumpur. Um, but I, I guess that the um, key thing about Verse 4 is that uh, people were angry enough mm. to actually gather. Mm. And um, the numbers actually outweigh what we got from Bursay 1, 2 and 3. <coughs> mm. uh, and it actually shows that uh, Malaysians uh, were actually concerned about mm. what is happening in yeah. Malaysia and it was never a race issue. Mm. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. think, as a, you were in, in the group, in the rally, do you think it was a success? Well, I think it was. Can people hear? Yes, yeah, yes, I, th I think it was an enormous success. And, it, and in spite of the efforts of, um, of a certain uh, political party to paint it as a mainly Chinese and DAP-led movement, it was in fact multiracial. And, and Maria will testify that the organizers were multiracial. And when I went for the launching uh, of, of Bursay 4, 50% of the crowd was Malays. And Chinese and made up of many, of many, many, many races. And when I was there, okay, the Chinese predominated, but this, the, on the first day. But the second day, the Malays came out in full force. We had the Machis and Pakchis. I was there um, for for the grand finale, and it was a very festive atmosphere. And the Malay Machis and the Pakchis with their children and grandchildren in tow were, <coughs> were there, and the spirit was so festive. And, and I think the Malays came out because, uh, on the second day, because there were fears initially that, that, that there would be untoward incidents and like the previous Bursays that the police would overreact with tear gas and with uh, water cannons and so on. But when we were out in the streets, we must congratulate the Malaysian police. They were, they, they were there to control the crowd, but they were not, they were not Obvious and and the crowd was very good natured, and and they listened to the to the people who were there to to direct them and so on. The police did not have any problems, and the fact that Bursay, Maria made an appeal, uh, for two hundred donations of two hundred thousand from the public, um, simply to 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 um, to underwrite the 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 Bursay, the expenses for the Bursay rally. They got this time 2.8 million ringgit. People just donated. And what does that tell you? People were concerned enough and angry enough. They just took out the checkbooks and the company on whose board I sat. When, when we, we circulated Maria's, uh, Maria's appeal, the message through, through SMS, WhatsApp and whatnot, they generously took out their wallets. And, and even ordinary people gave 10 ringgit, isn't it matter that one ringgit and so on to the, you know, to the tune of 2.8. What does that tell you? That Malaysians woke up, that they were concerned enough. And, well, we had half a million on the street, even though, of course, uh, some people dismissed it as 20,000, which was utter rubbish because you had all these drone photographs and whatnot. I went there uh, at 2.30 p.m. from the Maybank, one of the meeting points. And we walked towards um, um, Jalan Tun Pera. We were al walking along Jalan Tun Pera towards Datara Merdeka. And it was so packed and crowded. We, we were inching our way. We were just inching our way. It was that packed. And of course, there were <coughs> marchers also from Jalan Tun Tuanku Abdul Rahman and, and, and so on. So in terms of numbers, it was a success. In terms of, of the of the of the money that they that were donated, it was a success. So don't believe all this, um, all the uh, statements from from certain quarters dismissing it as just a, 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 a 
you know, as, as, as a, a rally which was um, not, not well supported, that it was a racist thing, it was DAP-led, it was Chinese-dominated, it was not. It was very multiracial. Even those who did not attend, they still contributed in terms of funding. So all in all, I would say it was a huge success. There are five demands of Bursi. Yeah. Now, GE14 <coughs> is just around the corner. I know it's three years away, but it's, it's <laughs> close. How can you ensure that we will get those demands without clean elections? Because you know what, you know what is happening. If you look at the uh, five demands of per se, yeah. it is uh, really asking for institutional reform. Yeah. We are practical. Mm. Uh, we are very uh, grounded to yeah. know that you know this is mm. not something that will ha happen overnight. And even if a GE14 were yeah. to come around, the present government will not give us fully um, the demands that we want. Because uh, what were the demands? Mainly, it's uh, clean and fair elections, uh, clean government. Uh, that is very demanding on them already. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> parliamentary reform. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, we also have uh, in terms of um, uh, the economy, to save the economy. So these are demands that uh, we, we need it anyway. Mm. Yeah, it's not just about Najib, but before Najib and even after Najib, we need this kind of uh, yeah. reforms. Um, we, we will continue working on it, particularly we are a little bit more confident is the parliamentary democracy yeah. uh, where we actually sat down together um, with the members of parliament from opposition and also Barisan National to come up with uh, um, recommendations on how we want to reform the parliament. That was yeah. before Berze rally. So um, we will continue fighting for the institutional reform. Yeah. And I, um, the reason why we emphasize this time round uh, on institutional reform is that we, do, we realize that even if you change the, the head, mm. it doesn't mean that you know, mm. um, it will not continue because yeah. uh, why we are where we are now mm. is really an accumulation mm. of past government policies yeah. that have actually not corrected themselves and yeah. not taken governance, uh, democracy, accountability and transparency and uh, resolve yeah. corruption in yeah. our system, yeah. that we re land up yeah. where you have a, 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 a prime minister together with his cabinet who is doing much better in terms of corruption, in terms of abuse of uh, uh, powers. Yeah? Mm. So um, we want a long-term uh, mm. reform, definitely. Mm. And uh, we are hoping that uh, after um, after Bursay uh, for rally, we will continue to do that. Um, but uh, right now, we have many, many more challenges, of yes. course. Have you got anything to add to that? Yes. Oh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> no. We have, as you are all aware, we have serious <laughs> governance issues. <clears throat> and most of our public constitu uh, institutions are on the verge of collapse. You saw what happened to the task force, which was tasked to investigate um, the 1MD, 1MDB scandal. They were, the members were intimidated. They were harassed. They were, they were arrested. The Attorney General, who was one of the main members of the task force, was unceremoniously bundled out. Um, the Anti-Corruption Commission, DPP, or Deputy Public Prosecutor, was arrested. Um, they arrested also the MACC. MACC is the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, one of the advisors. They arrested the secretary of the, of the MACC task force, uh, who happened to be a um, Singapore national, but she has permanent residence in Malaysia. And they also attempted to transfer two of the MACC officers who were investigating one of the subsidiaries of 1MDB. Then there was a smear campaign against the governor of the central bank, uh, Tan Sri Zeti. So I'm not saying who is behind it, but obviously those who, who have something to hide obviously gave instructions to the IGP to, under, to well to do all this, 
But for us, if we are ever going to have free and fair elections, the main thing is you have to reform uh, the, the electoral system. And the G25 initiated, um, we, we have taken the in initiative to undertake a transparent and accountable political funding as an underlying framework to eliminate corruption and promote clean governance. So we came up with a statement um, and we, because we cannot act alone, we managed to get 70 other NGOs and CSOs to support us. So what we are doing is we are working now. We, we've already come up with a declaration, declaration, issued a statement. It was in the media. What we are doing now, because, of course, after the $2.6 billion uh, was, was, was alleged to have been found in Najib's personal bank accounts, and this was the allegation of the Wall, uh, Wall Street Journal, it was never denied by Najib, but he said it was not for personal gain. But of course, people knew it was for slash fund for the last general elections. And uh, well, they, they might, they might, of course, use this for the next general election. So it is crucial that. And then, of course, MACC <coughs> uh, stated uh, that this, the 2.6 billion ringgit, which is a lot of money, came from foreign sources. So the demands that, that we are making in our de declaration, and of course Berse and Empower, Maria's organizations, are part of the NG 70 NGOs who are supporting this. 80. Now 80, oh, we've come up to 80. Sorry, I've been incommunicado for the past two weeks because of no internet connection, and Maria's just come here. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just... Uh, um, because we said, okay, we have to regulate the political financing. The political parties can receive political financing, whether it's from individuals, companies, and so on, but they must declare. They must, they must declare the source of the funding. Another demand is that no, that we, they should not accept any funding from foreigners. Because, of course, this will affect, this is going to affect our, the sovereignty, uh, and they might interfere with our, with, with, with the elections. So, so we do not want that. And um, so we said w to enable fair elections 2018, this is the, the, the why the political funding reforms are needed. Ensure polit politicians can act without fear and favor. Empower a new breed of politicians to enter the political system. And ensure all parties have equal access to acceptable financing sources to promote a level playing field in federal and state elections. And our ultimate objective is to return to Malaysia the kind of parliamentary democracy envisaged under the federal constitution through fair elections. So our demands include undertake legislative reforms to legitimize political contributions under a transparent and accountable regime. Um, and then we welcome the government's long-standing suggestion to introduce a political parties Act called the PPA. This PPA should incorporate the following key aspects on the financing of politics. Regulations involving different forms of elections, federal state elections, and in future maybe local elections, and internal party elections. Public disclosure of sources of funds on a quarterly basis during normal times and on a no daily basis during electoral contests. Balance public funding of all parties in federal and state elections. Balance are limits on donations by individuals and corporate bodies and a cap on funds from anonymous do donors. Donations channeled via fundraising managers or foundations also must disclose the original donor's identities rather than be treated as a single sum. Ban on foreign donations as it can inter interfere with autonomy and sovereignty of domestic politics and the basis on which policies are promulgated. Ban on secret political funds held by individuals or trustees. Limits on expenditure during party and general elections. Creation of a list of permissible and non-permissible funders, donors. The latter will include GLCs or government-linked companies and companies privy to public contracts and licenses. And finally, ban on parties holding power at federal and state levels to launch development programs, which is the, the norm now, 
where they will open a bridge, open a hospital, open open a school, you know, uh, two weeks or two months before the general elections, <coughs> uh, <coughs> including those that involve a transfer of cash, like BRIM, for example, material goods or benefits in kind, that can be construed as vote buying and undertake institutional reforms to ensure the independence of the elect election commission. Because under the present system, the two major institutions responsible for monitoring elections and parties are the Elections Commission and the societies, uh, Registrar of Societies. And the political parties are regulated by the Societies Act, which also oversees the welfare and social bodies. And the Election Commission is responsible for conducting elections, keeping electoral rules, and reviewing the division of the country into parliamentary and state constituencies. And right now they're undertaking the redelineation of certain uh, constituencies. And EC members are appointed by the King on the recommendation of the Prime Minister. And the formation and running of parties are overseen by the Registrar of Societies, uh, which falls under the jurisdiction of the Minister of Home Affairs. And under this system, the executive arm of government has direct or indirect control over the governance of parties and the running of elections, a core factor, in our opinion, that has to be reformed. So we call for reconstitution of the Elections Commission as a National Election Commission to ensure effective participation of all arms of government with a provision that one opposition member of parliament must serve on this institution. And to be responsible, the, e the NEC must be responsible for the running of elections, redelineation exercises, and the enforcement of legislation pertaining to the running of political parties and elections, and to be empowered to investigate and prosecute alleged breaches in election laws. Such powers are now fragmented again amongst the Elections Commission, the Anti-Corruption Commission and the AG's Chambers, and which hampers speedy and efficient conduct of investigation. So the reforms must be undertaken to promote citizens' right to information and state impartiality. And political funding reforms are imperative to identify and prevent conflict of interest situations, patronage and corruption. And the funders of parties by individuals and groups must be disclosed to ensure that they do not stand to benefit inappropriately from public decisions. For this, freedom of information legislation must be enacted at both federal and state levels. And a level playing field during electoral contests is not possible without state impartiality. For example, individuals and businesses financing the opposition which is happening now should not be targeted by tax, regulatory or enforcement bodies for investigation. Deliberate acts by public officials to selectively persecute, prosecute or harass citizens or businesses on partisan grounds should be criminalized. So what we're doing now, uh, because we were invited, because after the, the, the discovery or the allegation of the 2.6 billion which were found in the uh, private bank accounts of the Prime Minister, he came up with, uh, with this initiative to create, uh, to establish uh, a political funding uh, commission, a committee, to draw up guidelines on political funding or political financing. And G25 was one of the, uh, one of the groups who were invited to be on this body. Uh, we thanked them very much, but our concern is that, like many, many other committees, commissions, and so on, okay, there's all this grand fanfare and all the announcement, so they come out, all the hard work, they come out, they work very hard to come up with recommendations, and then it just gathers dust. It's either binned or, it gathered, uh, or it's just shelved. No action is taken, and our concern that the recommendations of this particular commission will end the same way. So we feel that we should take the initiative, CSO should take the initiative, hence we came up with this, uh, with this announcement and with this declaration. What we're going to do is we may, we're considering the possibility of embarking on a roadshow countrywide because many of the, of the NGO CSOs who are members, uh, who are part of the group, who, who have joined, uh, who, who have endorsed this de declaration, they are grassroots movements. 
and they've got uh, they are in touch and they've got members membership amongst the grassroots rural areas rural people semi urban and so on but we also want to engage MPs from across the political divide because our intention is to is to table a private member's bill on this to pass an act on political financing and so we need to do a lot of lobbying amongst not just the political parties but as i said amongst grassroots and people countrywide to 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 to, to try and and uh, and and uh, well sell this idea to them so we must make sure that this is done before the next general elections so so this is so things are happening this is what we're trying to do and and you as you can see civil society now one of the results of all the suppression and the uh, oppression and 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 selective prosecution under you know sedition acts and so on is that civil society has become more active people are willing to speak up and speak out and and, and that is a very very positive um development what percentage of all those reforms that you mentioned do you think the government will adhere to before GE14? Well, as, as I said, um, well, these are our recommendations. Yeah. But we, what we want to do is to have an act passed through a private member's bill. Do you think it's possible? Well, why not? Because we have passed, possible. attempted to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to to table a private member's bill to pave the way for the implementation <coughs> of Hudud in the East Coast state of Kelantan. Uh, so far, they have not succeeded because, of course, government government business takes precedence. Yeah. But if we can get if we can get enough support from members of parliament across the political divide, not just from the opposition, nothing is it's not impossible. But it is worth working towards because okay. to do nothing is not a solution. Mm -hmm. Now, Bursi issued. A, did you have anything else to add to that? Um, I think Bursi is part of uh, this yes. uh, declaration, yeah. but I, I, I think that one, one thing that uh, we really need to be clear is that when we actually ask for the resignation of the Prime Minister, yeah. we put in the institutional reform, yeah. we put in the uh, political financing, it is actually to one broaden the whole discussion, the whole yeah. narrative of what we yeah. mean by democracy in mm. Malaysia, because for a long time we lost it. Yeah. We lost it with the present government, we lost it with the previous government. Yeah. Um, and, and this is actually putting out into the open to say that, you know, this is how we want the country to run. Mm. And the other thing is that uh, we have to push the boundaries. Mm. We have to actually challenge all the members of parliament mm. whom we have voted in yeah. and who are doing nothing mm. uh, for so many years in parliament that these, uh, to tell them that these are the things that they should be concerned about as members of parliament. And this time round, the agenda setting is on the, on the people's side and not on their side. Because for a long time, we have left them to actually think about the reforms in the parliament, the reforms that is going to happen at the state level and all that, and nothing has actually happened. So mm -hmm. if we don't do anything, uh, if we don't uh, and still continue to allow these people to uh, manipulate the yeah. laws, manipulate the mm. parliament, mm. pass laws um, uh, without even allowing any yeah. uh, kind of uh, discussion, mm. um, we, we will not be building a democratic Malaysia. Yeah. So if we want to make the change, mm. we have to actually say something. And I think that we are in a position now to say something because Bursay 4 actually says that, you know, the people are behind mm. this reform movement and the reform movement's agenda mm. is what the people mm. wants to push forward. Yeah. We, we, we are very confident now that when we go to the streets or when we actually ask people to come forward for support, mm. we have 100,000 behind us. Yeah. Uh, and, and that makes a difference because yeah. politicians at the end of the mm. day still wants to know what their voters uh, say mm. because after all, it mm. will uh, convert into votes. Mm. And we are trying to uh, take advantage of that yeah. kind of support to, to, to manage this mm. uh, reform that we want. But of course, there are certain weaknesses. Um, we wouldn't deny that, you know, our outreach has not mm. been so mm. extensive yet. Yeah. 
So um, hopefully together with G25, uh, Berset ourselves, we already started our roadshow mm. to talk about the reform and yeah. uh, we are actually targeting more Sabah, Sarawak, yeah. uh, places where our reform agenda has mm. not been discussed. Mm. And we're hoping that um, more people will come on board uh, mm. with our roadshow. Yeah. Uh, because if you look at uh, what happened on Berset 4, on the 29 itself, mm. we could actually recruit 1,000 volunteers mm. just mm. one day. Within mm. one hour, we mm. got 1,000 volunteers mm. to help us clean the rubbish and yeah. uh, manage the yeah. crowd and the traffic mm. and all that. So people want to do something. Mm. But what is it that we should be mm. offering them to do? This is, this is the reform agenda that we're offering them to come on board with us to go around the country, talk about mm. the reform. Yeah. Um, the young people in Malaysia, we mm. now have a group now, uh, and they are taking this mm. agenda mm. to uh, do it in a cultural mm. and more creative way. Mm. Uh, we also have um, uh, our own um, group of uh, speakers who mm. are actually now being mm. trained by mm. um, Berse mm. to go around to talk about it. So we are trying to reach different mm. segments of the society mm. so that they understand why mm. is it that we have Berse for. Mm. It mm. is actually not just because we love to be on the streets, although mm. some of them do, but then uh, <laughs> it is actually for the country. Yeah. We are actually doing it for the country and that agenda must be very clear. Berse for issued a <coughs> statement um, demanding the resignation of Najib Abdul Razak. Now, what was the feeling on the ground when it was all over and he was still there? <laughs> I, I guess there's a, there's a background to why we eventually... People ask, why did Berse even um, get involved in this kind of um, uh, demands? Um, when the, um, the Wall Street Journal actually made the allegations, we demanded for an answer. Mm. Because some of the money, the, the allegation is very serious. It's saying that mm. you, it has gone into your personal account mm. uh, and it has been used mm. more or less like a slush fund mm. for elections. Mm. Um, and and uh, which means, you know, um, so it was uh, GE13 uh, properly managed mm. because now uh, it looks as though Barisa National has a slush run. Mm. So we want answers. Is it true or is it not true? That's all. Very simple. Mm. Um, and uh, we gave him one month mm. to actually uh, give the answer. <coughs> Mm. Secondly is that um, all the uh, accounts of uh, Najib and his uh, spouse should be frozen. And thirdly, to allow the, uh, the investigation of um, the Anti-Corruption Commission to go on and mm. also the task force to mm. go on and to make that investigation public. Three very simple yeah. demands which he can actually do as a Prime Minister. He has mm. all the powers to do mm. that. Mm. Uh, but before yeah. the one month came up, yeah. like what uh, Farida has actually said, he did all those things, got rid of um, this, um, the DPM. AG, the PM, and DPM. all that, and mm. DPM, uh, and actually um, mm. created a cabinet around mm. himself mm. that actually just supports him. Mm. Uh, and, and totally... Um, totally disintegrated mm. all mm. investigation mm. whether it's at the parliamentary level and that is really serious you know this yeah. is a parliamentary level yeah. task force yeah. and the yeah. other one is an anti-corruption mm. task force that mm. has, that is actually investigating a corruption mm. and he just disintegrated it without any 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 kind of uh, discussion so mm. because he did that mm. We feel that, you know, we just cannot have a Prime Minister mm. who actually supports corruption, mm. has no qualm about um, not answering mm. the Rakyat's call and uh, not bothering about transparency yeah. and accountability. Yeah. So that's why we came yeah. up with this very strong mm. call to say mm. that, you know, uh, resign, mm. but to put into place the institutional reform mm. through a transitional government. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in uh, 18 months or 12 months, have mm. a fresh election. Now, why did we ask to mm. do that? It's mainly because mm. at the same time when we were making this demand, what happened to Sri Lanka was that mm. the ruling government, because mm. they were also mm. facing uh, mm. issues of corruption, 
uh, economic issues and um, health and so mm. forth. Mm. They combine with a minority opposition mm. party mm. and form a national government. Mm. Mm. If Sri Lanka can actually uh, go above mm. race politics, go <coughs> above uh, the political party yeah. politics, and actually form a national government to save mm. the country, mm. Mm. I don't see why Malaysia mm. cannot do it. Because I think that you know uh, we are, we are, we have progressed well mm. economically and also mm. to some extent um, mm. socially and all that, and mm. we we should be able to lead and be able to rise above party politics mm. and come together as opposition and also as ruling government to actually say that you know we want to do something for the country and for the people and not just for <coughs> their own personal interests. Mm. Um, and a lot of other countries have actually come together just for that sake. Mm. So mm. that's why that was our solution mm. for us to come out of the political and economic crisis in Malaysia. Mm. So therefore, you know, our demands are definitely there. We know mm. that um, even uh, the, the vote of no confidence has been put in by Datin mm. um, um, Sri uh, Wan Aziza. Uh, Early this week or la mm, uh, mm, late last the resolution. week, yeah, the mm. resolution. So uh, we, um, but I think that uh, why we call for that vote of no confidence is really to push the boundary again of mm. um, whether the MPs that we elected, mm. yeah, regardless of which political party they come through, whether they will be brave enough mm. to stand tall mm. this time round. Mention the vote of no confidence now in the West. Whenever there is a peer mm -hmm. with a whiff of scandal about mm. him, mm. He, his party will ask him to resign. Mm. Mm. Why is it so difficult in Malaysia to unseat him? Well, <laughs> Malaysia <laughs> bully. You saw Malaysia bully. <laughs> Madam, as you saw the response of the ruling party, or rather the, the dominant partner in the ruling coalition, to the Bursi rally was to twist it you know, to twist it and manipulate it and trying to dupe the, the, especially the rural Malays and the Malays basically to say that this was DAP led, this was Chinese dominated, Chinese led, and Malays were duped. They completely, and so the, we must have this uh, red shirt rally to redeem Malay dignity. This is Marwah Malayu. So people are asking, the thinking Malaysians are asking, uh, when was Malay dignity trampled on? Even some of my simple relatives from the rural and from the kampong said, I don't recall my dignity being trampled on. <laughs> and what basically was the birthday demands? That they felt that this was an insult to the Malays. First was clean elections. Is that against the Malays? Clean government, is that against the Malays? Do the Malays want the one MDP scandal when 42 billion of taxpayers' money um, or, or were misappropriated and then we're calling for saving the economy? Is that against the Malays? Fourth was uh, the right to dissent. What's the fifth, Maria? I always forget the fifth. Democracy. Parliamentary democracy. Are these against the Malays? See how they have twisted it. And uh, uh, Marina very uh, pertinently pointed out, are Malays, are, are Malays for dirty government, dirty elections? We don't want the right to dissent. We don't want to save the economy. I mean, look at the way they've twisted it. And then so they had the red shirt rally. It was not as peaceful or uneventful as the Bursay rally. But they are going around. And you had government cabinet ministers and senior government, uh, senior AMNO <coughs> leaders taking part in the Red Shirt Rally and, and making inflammatory speeches against, against the Chinese especially. And then they had this, uh, uh, even the posters had this Chris, Chris wielding a, 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 a Malay warrior calling for shedding of blood. They are prepared to see another, well, race riots on May 13 erupt simply because they want to cling to power. They are using race and religious, you know, race, uh, uh, using the race and religious cards to cling to power. I mean, it's something like Emperor Nero of, of the Roman Empire playing on his fiddle while Rome burnt. 
And I'm not exaggerating. Our, our leaders have come to that. And then there is a video going around <coughs> where Najib, um, well, they had a ceremony with uh, uh, the the Silat, the the, the, Silat, the National Silat Silat Association, who was the uh, organizer, one of the organizers of the, of the Red Shirt Rally, and and he was talking about oh Malay, the the Malays Malay dignity has been trampled on. We are not going to take this lying down. To, this is the fourth in a long series of, 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 of birthday rallies where they've trampled on Malay dignity. He completely overlooked the fact that the first three birthday rallies were Malay dominated. Isn't it, Maria? Because you know why? Because past then was a member and they bust in the Malays from the rural areas, especially their, especially their, their members. But this time, they were not part of the organizing committee. And you don't expect poor Malays from the rural areas to pay for the bus fare, to pay for, for the stay in KL and whatnot. They can't afford it. Unlike the Red Shirts Rally, where, well, these are, these are allegations which went around on WhatsApp and, and people actually came up, you know, uh, shared, shared these letters to the Felder settlers, settlements, saying that, oh, you are invited to come to KL to celebrate National Day, uh, for our National Day celebrations, we'll provide transport. So they were all bust in, into KL. When they arrived in KL, they were given red shirts and told to march, march to their bewilderment. So, well, obviously, I'm not going to use the word trickery or dupe, but it's very close to it, isn't it? Well, it, what this seed was used. So, and then, of course, there were also allegations that they were paid to participate. I used the word, I dismissed this rally as a rent a mob rally. And, well, some, some polit smart political analysts uh, scolded me, told me off saying, as a former diplomat, I should be wary about, about uh, causing f further polarization between the Malays. But these are not, these, what is of concern is that. The Malays are being deliberately, especially those who are not well educated enough to think for themselves, they, they, they are inflaming Malay passions. And this might, and Malays who are insecure about, even though, you know, the Malays dominate the government, the civil service, just about everything, plus we have Malay privileges enshrined the constitution and what we've got the national, the new economic policy, in spite of that, the majority of poor people are Malays, and there are very many Malay, insecure Malays who might fall for this, for, for this uh, well, attempt to turn them against the Chinese. That is the worrying part, because they will stop at nothing. And we had a former Malay minister during the Red Shirts rally in flaming passion saying, I am by nature racist because it's allowed in the Quran. <laughs> Can you imagine? A constitution, the Quran. Of course, he is not familiar with Article 8 on equality. <laughs> and one of the fundamental liberties um, provisions in our federal constitution. Mm. And even the Quran, Quran, there are clear, clear surahs, chapters in the Quran, which states that, 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 that um, tribalism or racism is well, Farouk, Farouk Peru will, 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 I'm sure, support me on this, which, which says that you are not a Muslim if you, if you uphold tribalism. And even the Prophet's last sermon, he made it clear that the Arabs are not superior to non-Arabs and non-Arabs are not superior to Arabs. So, and one of our great ulamas even said, the fall of civilization will start when there is tribalism. And true enough, this is what is happening. And they are twisting the religion, they are twisting the federal constitution for their own ends. But happily, many, many, many Malay Muslims, uh, uh, Malay Muslim groups came up and, 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 and uh, told them off. And even one week before the Red Shirt Rally, which unfortunately happened uh, on our Malaysia Day, which should be a day for national unity, and you know, this was such a travesty to have it, such a racist um, um, event on Malaysia Day. But anyway, but um, 
Many, many, what, uh, 16 Malay Muslim professional groups, including G25, came up with a statement, published a statement to condemn the Red Shirt Rally, saying it was racist, and to say that it's not Islam, and that the Red Shirts do not represent the voice of the Malay Muslims. So many, many Muslim uh, groups came up and condemned the Red Shirts. And also, what was very gratifying, uh, before the Bursay Rally, the the uh, ex-servicemen association, the president of the ex-servicemen association endorsed the birthday rally to say that to participate in the birthday rally, and this is a Malay guy, uh, to participate in the birthday rally is an act of patriotism. So what is happening is that more and more Malay Muslims are speaking up. They are not buying the government propaganda and all these attempts to create divisions among the races. But as I say, what is unfortunate is that we need to also counter, counter all this propaganda by also going down to the grassroots and making them aware that these are attempts, these are attempts by, by certain quarters to, to create, to create, um, a, a, a racial strife and racial divisions simply so that they can remain in power. Under what conditions will you call for Bursay 5? <laughs> well, uh, at the Bursay 4 rally, I did say that, you know, if, um, if we get through the uh, institutional reform, Bursay 5 will be a celebration of people's uh, power. Um, uh, the condition, I think, uh, will really depend on how we are going to uh, pan out the next uh, two to three years. But for Najib, that's how I see him. Um, now, in order to consolidate his power, mm. he has done a few things. Mm. One is that uh, his cabinet now is very well uh, established, bought over, mm. uh, right down to the um, heads of uh, the branches. Mm. Um, these, are the, these are important uh, key, key um, people to actually buy over because they will be the ones who will be determining who is going to be leading uh, AMNO and... Mm. and so forth yeah um, secondly is that the race card will continue I, I, I don't think that he's going to let it go he will continue using it although at the UN in uh, New York he and uh, Sahid Hamidi is saying that oh you know we have to be very careful about racism and stuff like that but, but that is the jungle and hide of uh, mm. uh, Najib yeah mm. where he will go out of the country and produce uh, and give the impression that Malaysia is still moderate, mm. tolerant, mm. and uh, accept, uh, accepting uh, transformation. But uh, internally in the country, you know, we are still very much uh, um, mm. suppressed. Mm. So the race card will definitely be used. And mm. together with the race card, he is actually, um, like what <coughs> Farida is saying, rent a tuck. It's going rent to a mob. Um, rent a mob. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to use more um, yeah. gangsters to actually um, try to threaten people. Uh, one of the birthday four, post birthday four uh, meeting that we had, um, thirty or forty of them just barge in, mm. uh, and it was meant to just bully us. Mm. The whole meeting mm. actually mm. stopped. Mm. <coughs> But we actually, uh, and we gave them the platform to speak. Mm -hmm. We actually uh, took photos with them um, to, to, to actually tell them that we are not fearful of them. Mm -hmm. it, although, you know, in our hearts, probably they say uh, we were telling ourselves they will probably be bashed up already because mm -hmm. um, the people who bashed in uh, are not your ordinary mm -hmm. Malaysians, you know, because mm -hmm. I think Malaysians are still peace loving. Mm -hmm. Um, these are actually thugs who actually come in with the intention to actually uh, create problems. Mm. And you will see him using more and more of these people. Mm. Because these same people who barge into our meeting in Penang were the same people who actually barge into the state assembly meeting. Mm. The same people who actually broke up a state assembly uh, meeting. <coughs> Um, the people who actually uh, were at Sogo in KL mm. were also the same people who did the butt dance in front of Ambiga's mm. house. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. you know, they are all one the same. 
Those were the army veterans. Yes, mm. the former army veterans, and then Ali of course Tinju. they found this mm. uh, Jamal Yunus, who mm. is a uh, uh, bankrupt, and uh, he has nothing better to do, right? Mm. So um, the other thing <laughs> is that um, <coughs> the the religion card will also be used, particularly mm. Hudud, mm. because uh, who is going to mm. uh, align with Amno? Because MCA, MIC are at the weakest at the mm. present moment. It will mm. be passed. Mm. And, um, and the horse trading will be to give pass more seats mm. in relation to, um, uh, uh, sorry, to actually have Amno back in power and pass will have its hudud. So uh, the rumour now is that the coming uh, mm. parliament session, hudud, that private members mm. bill, mm will actually be brought forward mm. and uh, it will be discussed. Mm. So, um, so that, that is something that we will see mm. uh, happening. Um, for, uh, and for mm. Najib, I think that, you know, um, failing which all mm. this doesn't work, he is actually uh, suppressing the right to dissent. Mm. Particularly if you see the trend in which the uh, laws have been used, first they use it, um, they actually use the Sedition Act Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, the Sedition Act was a promise from Najib himself mm. to mm. say that he will do away with it mm. and bring in a national unity, uh, the harmony laws, uh, national mm. harmony laws, mm. <coughs> which he didn't do. Mm. Um, so he used the the Sedition Act to the fullest. <coughs> where up to now we have over one hundred people charged under sedition, mm. Mm. and still there are some people still uh, having new cases. Mm. Uh, the other thing that uh, since Sedition Act, because there were so many uh, protests, uh, he used the penal code, mm. yeah, where uh, he managed to find a section in the penal code where it states that you know um, mm. you can be accused or attempt to actually um, destroy parliamentary democracy mm. without actually mm. even defining yes. what you mean by parliamentary yeah. mm. democracy. Mm. Raising mm. questions mm. about corruption mm. is now considered anti-parliamentary democracy, mm. and how ridiculous mm. it is, you know. Let's see what the courts uh, say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, But you see, other than um, and uh, some of us have been actually charged under that. Mm. The other one that they are using is actually under Kairudin, where SOSMA mm. has been used. Mm. The uh, security offences. Um, mm. And this one is actually a replacement mm. of the Internal Security mm. Act where there is a detention mm. without trial, mm. um, uh, indefinite detention, mm. and it can actually be a life sentence. Mm. You know, it can mm. go on forever. Mm. Uh, and they are using SOSMA, mm. which is a bit scary because uh, anyone who is found mm. to be violent mm. or show violence mm. or show that or attempt to even show violence, mm. you can be charged under SOSMA. And it means that it will um, keep most of the social activists in jail. Mm. Uh, so so the these are didn't the, show violence? That has to be proved in court. <laughs> nah? He showed violence by making all these uh, police reports all yeah. over the country, mm. uh, all over the, the other countries. The world, but yeah. I think that uh, we are seeing a desperate government, mm. yeah, particularly mm. Najib himself, mm. at, uh, who is desperate enough to use any, any means mm. to stay in power mm. at all cost. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Mm. So, um, so he used the laws, he used mm. gangsters, he used mm. uh, money politics to actually, mm. in order that he himself is secured enough mm. Uh, mm. because he, he doesn't want to go to jail. That's for sure. Mm. He actually doesn't want to be accountable for the money that has been squandered or mm. not squandered. Um, you, and we have uh, a cabinet and some of the former ministers and all that standing up for him mm. just because they are beholden to him mm. and they do not want to fall. Mm. And that is the kind of governance that we have today in Malaysia. Mm. And we have to actually say uh, very loudly that we cannot have mm. this to continue. Mm. Mm. First of all, he has to go, definitely. Mm. Um, mm. I am for him to actually be removed Although some people mm. say Never mind, keep him until next election And uh, kick him out mm. But I think that for the, for the welfare of the country He has mm. to go mm. 
so that we can actually get people to reorganize the country and we go on the uh, uh, the right path um, and the other thing is that um, more and more people have to speak up we have a lot of silent majority but I think at this present moment we should surpass that silent majority and to actually speak up because if we don't the next generation will yeah. actually suffer yeah yeah. Mm. So uh, um, these are the things that we actually need to really think mm. about. And international pressure, although it's not uh, co well mm. covered in the local newspaper, mm. but it hurts. Mm. And that is the one of the uh, um, weak point that uh, mm. Najib uh, feels because he still thinks that you know he is um, he wants to be considered as a moderate leader. Mm. Uh, among the international community, um, and he whether you he's in a state of denial or not, but I think that he f he's, he feels very strongly about international uh, opinion, and and Malaysians overseas uh, should actually start mm. lobbying, lobbying mm. to actually expose name and shame, because mm. how can you mm. actually have somebody who steals mm. our money? Mm. and still remain in power. How strong is your message in the rural areas? How strong is the birthday message in the rural areas? Um, I, I, we are actually working on it. Uh, we are very confident that the west coast of um, uh, Semenanjung um, definitely understand it. It's a matter of uh, accessibility mm. to information. And um, mm. I think that not all the uh, rural Malays are uh, that ignorant. Mm. It's a matter of whether mm. they have the information or not. Mm. Mm. Uh, a lot, there is now a lot of misinformation mm. and, mm. and uh, no information. Yeah, and yeah? manipulation. S and yeah. ma manipulation of the, the information. Mm. So we are actually thinking of other creative mm. ways mm. to communicate with mm. the general public mm. through uh, handphones, through mm. uh, tapes and all that, mm. uh, to actually get our message through. Uh, mm. We are working with definitely all the NGOs. Mm. But you see, I think that um, the, the, the positive side is that uh, because birthday 4 happened, mm. there are a lot of people who have actually come forward to volunteer mm. Uh, from all parts of Malaysia to volunteer to help Berse, um to get the message across. Mm -hmm. So we are actually tapping on that mm -hmm. uh, and particularly I am very very uh, encouraged are the young Malays. Mm -hmm. The young Malays have actually formed themselves into groups and mm -hmm. it's not just uh, KL mm -hmm. but in Johor mm -hmm. uh, we have groups in Pahang, mm -hmm. uh, Penang, Kedah, mm -hmm who have actually mm. organized themselves into mm. a, a very effective uh, mm. uh, group, you know, to reach mm. out to the various uh, students. And all. In the absence of an effective opposition coalition, what is the role of Bursi? The Because we don't have an effective opposition, do we? No, are you <laughs> are you performing that role? Well, Bursi and CSOs generally. <laughs> la. Yeah. 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 I but I, I feel that you know um, we put a lot of our eggs in the basket mm. of the mm. political parties yeah. so mm. when they actually don't uh, function as or meet up with our expectation mm. we we either get this illusion mm. or mm. you we become uh, cynical mm. about um, change mm. but uh, but I think that you know it's about mm. time now mm. that we actually look at ourselves mm. because if we can actually mm. bring out a few hundred thousand mm. yeah it's not a few hundred <coughs> a few hundred thousand mm. on the streets it mm. means that mm. we have the power we have yeah. the power to actually effect change mm. uh, and so n now is actually how do we governize mm. and uh, strengthen mm. that power to yeah. say that mm. Ordinary Malaysians mm. who love the country mm. actually wants that change. Mm. Mm. So we mm. also cannot um, uh, leave it to the political parties because they, yeah. yes, they are yeah. in a, a bit of mm. 
trans mm, transition to, yeah transient stage yeah to mm. be more polite mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but i think that you know uh, mm. we we have to look at ourselves mm. are we going to continue to tolerate the present governance or yeah. we don't if mm. we don't then we have to do something mm. and we have done mm. something already yeah. i mean in london 2000 mm. people have come mm. forward that is something mm. Uh, even though it doesn't come into the newspaper of uh, mm. Malaysia, mm. but that effect of eighteen mm. thousand people mm. and mm. how many mm. cities? Eight uh, over fifty. Uh? Uh, yeah, yeah. So many mm. countries actually uh, mm. participated. Mm. Actually, gives that encouragement mm. to the uh, mm. activists mm. to when we go for our mm. charama, our mm. talks, our roadshow. <laughs> We tell them all this information, and they are really quite yeah. uh, encouraged that yeah. oh wow, uh, yeah. Malaysians who are outside are actually concerned about the issues. Mm, mm, so mm. I, I feel that you know don't underestimate the power of the people. Mm. We now have the opportunity yeah. to galvanize it. Yeah. So yeah. let's not lose it. <laughs>